The Trump administration is accelerating efforts to police the southern border. The Department of Homeland Security now says it's reassigning up to 2,000 inspectors to deal with a surge in migrants from Central America. Over the weekend, President Trump said he would cut aid to El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. He's also threatening to close the border. We'll get the details after the news summary. A computer glitch during the Monday morning airport rush delayed thousands of travelers today. It involved a flight planning contractor's computer system and hit Southwest Airlines the hardest, delaying nearly 1,000 flights. The Federal Aviation Administration said the issue was quickly resolved, but the damage was done. British lawmakers tried and failed again today to chart a path for how to leave the European Union. They held non-binding votes on principles that included a softer Brexit, keeping ties to the EU on trade, tariffs and immigration rules. All of the proposals failed. Some lamented Parliament's inability to agree on what to do. We live now in a horribly divided country with entrenched positions and intransigence on both sides. I think we play with fire if we do not recognise the danger. And I don't think there have been enough people seeking to find ways of bringing this country together again rather than maintaining the divisions. Britain is now scheduled to leave the EU on April 12th with no plan if Parliament can't agree on something. In Ukraine, a comic actor with no political experience is the front runner heading into a presidential runoff later this month. Volodymyr Zelensky finished first in Sunday's preliminary round with 30 percent of the vote. Incumbent President Petro Poroshenko was a distant second. Zelensky campaigned against corruption and called for direct talks with Moscow to end the conflict with Russian-backed rebels in eastern Ukraine. The opposition in Turkey has won control of the capital, Ankara, and is leading in the mayor's race in Istanbul, the nation's largest city. Sunday's local elections were seen as a verdict on President Recep Tayyip Erdogan amid serious economic troubles. Erdogan's Islamic-rooted AK party has promised appeals of the election results. A Vietnamese woman accused of killing the half-brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un pled guilty today to a reduced charge. Duan T. Huang entered the plea in Malaysia after a murder charge was dropped. Authorities initially said she and an Indonesian woman killed Kim Jong-nam at an airport in 2017 using a nerve agent. Huang has spent two years in jail, but her attorney says she's now expected to be released in early May. Our main interest is to protect the interests of Duan, to make sure that she serves sentence here and she can go back home as soon as she can. She's fine. She's happy and uh, jubilant about the sentence and the fact that she can go back home. The other suspect was freed last month. Both women maintained they thought they were taking part in a TV show prank. Human rights advocates have questioned whether North Korean leader Kim Jong-un played a role in the attack. Four North Korean suspects fled Malaysia after the killing of Kim. Confirmed cholera cases in Mozambique surged today to more than 1,000, with one confirmed death after last month's tropical cyclone. Health workers are rushing to contain the outbreak in Beira. The port city was left in ruins by the storm. Cholera spreads quickly through contaminated water and food. Back in this country, the 2020 U.S. Census begins a year from today, and President Trump has joined the fray over adding a question about citizenship. On Twitter today, he said the survey would be meaningless without asking whether someone is a U.S. citizen. Opponents of the move say it would deter non-citizens from taking part. The issue is now before the U.S. Supreme Court. And on Wall Street, upbeat data from U.S. and Chinese manufacturing got the second quarter off to a strong start. The Dow Jones Industrial Average soared 329 points to close at 26,258. The Nasdaq rose 99 points, and the S&P 500 added 32. Still to come on the news hour, as President Trump threatens to cut aid to Honduras, we look at the harsh conditions in that country. More controversy over the White House's handling of security clearances, the latest campaign moves in the race for 2020, and much more.